Um, so anyway, yes, hello, I'm Erin McKean. And right now I work on docs advocacy in Google's open source programs office. And my job, and it's a fun one, is to help open source projects have better documentation. So um, if you haven't heard the term docs advocacy before, well, it's pretty new. Basically, docs adv advocacy is about bringing better docs practices to the folks who often have the most power to make change, developers. And that could be whether you're creating good docs yourself or helping other people make good docs or by just creating a culture that enables and values good docs. And so way back in the dimness of time when I first started to code, um, I saw this quote at the beginning of the Pearl Camel book from Larry Wall. And uh, basically this quote really has stuck with me all these years. But I think that encouraging these three great virtues of a programmer, laziness and patience and hubris, when I see lazy dev, I, I read that as you don't want to expend effort just for the sake of expending effort. You want your work to have results. And when you're impatient, that means you wanna see results quickly. And you have hubris because you believe you're capable of doing what you want or need to do. And so if you would prefer more positive words, um, you could replace those with efficiency, zeal, and confidence. But I think that uh, a lot of this effort should be put towards documentation even if you're lazy. Why docs? Well, I think we all know that docs are important, but sometimes I think people are surprised by just how important documentation can be. So for example, in the Tidelift 2019 survey, 72% of the developers surveyed said that established policies and documentation was a key decision factor when choosing open source. And 93% of developers surveyed in the GitHub 2017 survey said that incomplete or outdated documentation is a pervasive problem in open source. Now I'm focused here on open source because that's what I work on, but I cannot imagine that closed source software has less of a need for good documentation. And lack of documentation was the top reason that devs gave for deciding against using an open source project. And that was in the Digital Ocean 2018 survey. So survey after survey shows that developers care about docs and they make choices and decisions based on documentation. So why don't we have better docs? Well, for one thing, I don't know the exact ratio of devs to technical writers across the industry as a whole, but it's nowhere near one-to-one. -one. So I would be surprised if there were even as many as you know a tech writer for every three devs which means that if you want docs as a dev, you're more than likely going to be working on them yourself. But hubris, remember, no problem, you've got this. Uh, I think that as devs, the first thing that we always want to do when we're attacking a new problem is to figure out what's the right tool. And there's a right tool for every problem. And in fact, you can think of docs as tools that solve problems. For example, we talk about docs, just like, oh, docs is one big thing, but there are at least four different types of documentation and different kinds of docs solve different problems. So um, Daniela Prachita in his 2017 PyCon Australia talk laid out this framework of the four types of documentation. So how-to guides, tutorials, explanation, and reference. And you should choose which of these docs tools to use based on the problem you have and the job you need your docs to do. So for example, I think a typical problem for some kinds of software is loneliness. I, I mean, lack of users. And I'm going to assume here that your code actually runs, does the thing it's supposed to do, et cetera, so that the problem is really that users can't see the utility of your code, of your software, of your project. And I think the docs tool to solve that problem is a how-to guide at first, preferably something quick, that solves a real problem that actual human beings have. So you might be thinking, okay, but what's the difference between a how-to guide and a tutorial? So I think there's a joke that the difference between a how-to and a tutorial is that a how-to solves the problem your users have and a tutorial solves the problem you want them to have. But really, jokes aside, I think of a tutorial as how to learn the preferred way to do something. Once a user has bought into the idea that your code is useful and has played around with it a little and seen that it can solve a problem and has patched the leaky boat of their own project with your how-to, 
A tutorial helps them develop the, the mental model to contextualize everything that your code or product or project is capable of. A tutorial has more surface area than a how-to. It allows for more extension or more scale. If a how-to is a recipe, then a tutorial is one of those cooking classes where you learn how to make like a six course meal. Um, a tutorial solves the, the what now problem. Tutorials can also solve a branding problem. If your tool is mostly used for use case A, but you feel like the most growth and opportunity is around use case B, then write tutorials showing off use case B. Let people visualize where you want them to be. Another problem that could be solved by tutorials um, more than say how to's or other kinds of docs is the let's make friends problem. So if you want your product or code to be used alongside other maybe bigger players in an ecosystem, tutorials can demystify those integrations. How to deploy my awesome thing on giant platform X is a classic example of a let's make friends tutorial. Um, tutorials and how to's are pretty straightforward tools to solve pretty straightforward problems, but there are definitely other problems that you can solve with docs. Um, a very common problem is when people aren't using your stuff because of a barrier to understanding. This is common when there's a new domain or ecosystem or paradigm and people have trouble figuring out why they should care, like service mesh, I don't know. And you can't sell a solution to a problem that people don't understand. This is a very common outlet for what's often called developer marketing. If you've ever traded away your email address for a white paper that explains everything that you must know about something new, then you know exactly what explanation documentation looks like. Um, there are some companies who do a really great job with this, like Honeycomb and Launch Starkly, talking about things like obs observability and feature flagging. But you do not need to be marketing a product to create this kind of documentation. Lots of explanation documentation are really just things like technical blogs where a dev is like noodling around, learns something new, gets excited, explodes all over a medium post. That's ex explanation documentation. A fantastic example, one of the best creators of non-marketing explanation documentation is Julia Evans, who's Bork with a zero on Twitter. She writes wizard zines explaining technical concepts. If you don't know her work, you are in for a tweet, treat, highly recommended. I love their wizard zines. And I think creating explanation documentation is really one of the best ways to create deep value with docs. Good explanation docs don't age as quickly as some tutorials and how to's do. And you can write explanation docs for anything you're interested in. It doesn't have to be your code, your project or product, just wherever your enthusiasm takes you. Basically, the goal of all good explanation documentation is to do what this side says, replace the fear of the unknown with curiosity. You don't have to be exhaustive or cover every use case, every edge case perfectly. All you have to do is be able to pour your enthusiasm into text. Just start there. So, okay, now we're on to my absolute favorite kind of documentation, reference documentation. Um, so reference documentation is basically snack size explanations. Reference documentation solves, you know, the Neil Montoya problem, right? Somebody doesn't know what something means and they need an easy way to figure it out. And reference documentation is not just glossaries. It can include API docs, including open API specs, sample config files, error codes, stuff like that. And reference docs should be the linkiest part of your documentation. Don't reinvent the wheel, be lazy. Link to other people's docs, link to Wikipedia, link to blog posts or articles, hack embed tweets if they help your user understand. Reference docs should be like a helping hand over rough ground and give your user confidence to move forward and use your tool or project product or code. Reference documentation can also include links to prerequisites or further reading. Like you might say, okay, well, I don't really wanna create all the explanation documentation that you might really need to understand, but I'll give you some references to further reading or things you might also be interested in. And if your thing depends heavily on someone else's thing, like a tool or a library, in, including in your reference docs, links that show how to configure that dependency is, is very, very helpful. Um, do not have your reference docs be where your warnings go to die. 
if something is going to implode or explode or spontaneously combust or turn into a giant pile of wriggling spiders, if something's not configured correctly, that information definitely belongs where it's needed at the point of use. Okay, so now you know a little bit more about what kinds of docs solve what kinds of problems you might have. You know the full spectrum of available docs tools, but you still have to write the docs. The good news is that you might have done all of this work or at least some of this work already. If you've been supporting your code or product or project, check your email and check your issue tracker. You might be able to match your email responses or your issue responses to one of these types of documentation. Did you lay out step-by-step -step instructions in an email to someone? That's a how-to or maybe even a tutorial. Did you explain how your thing fits in the wider landscape? That's explanation documentation. Did you share a sample config file or define some terms? Now you have a start on your reference documentation. You've probably already written the documentation. You just didn't really think of it as documentation. If you're stumped on how to start documenting something, just pretend you're writing an email to a friend or even a long form letter if that's what you're into. Tell them why you made the thing, what it's for, what they should watch out for, the rough spots, and what you want your thing to grow up to be. If, if you're really stumped, send it as text messages to yourself or, or include emoji, include gifts, do whatever you have to do to make it fun. Nobody reasonable will complain that your docs are too informal. They will complain if you don't have any docs at all. Another way to get past the blank page is to use documentation templates. Um, this is the Doctopus, the mascot of the Good Docs project. And if you go to this project on GitHub uh, and raise an issue in the templates repo asking for a flavor of template that you'd like to see that isn't there yet, I will send you Doctopus stickers, COVID or no COVID. Just add me to the issue. I'm Ina Keen on GitHub, very easy to find. Um, the Good Docs project is, is getting really close to releasing another round of versions of their templates. So now's a great time to ask for things. Um, and anyway, I'm very fond of the Doctopus. The Doctopus comes in a bunch of colors and he has a lot of accessories and all of the Doctopus images are available for people to remix. So if you need a mascot for your project's documentation, feel free to take the Doctopus and customize it. Um, if the template that you're looking for though doesn't exist yet, it is 100% okay to look at other projects docs as a model for your own docs. You should treat them like coloring book pages. Take the headings and the structure and use those as the lines that you fill in with your own content. Um, obviously check the licensing on things before you copy very much, but structure is not copyrightable most places. Also, I'm not a lawyer, but Look at their headings, see how they organize things. Do they make sense to you? How would you transpose that structure to your own documentation? If you need a whole documentation site, you should check out Doxy, which is an open source project backed by Google. It's a theme for the Hugo static site generator and it's specifically organized to help people create technical documentation sites quickly. The goal of these docs tools like templates and themes is really to reduce the cognitive load of making docs, to make it easier to do a reasonable thing, to make you not have to make a thousand decisions just to set up a doc site. It's, it's really to give you the yaks pre-shaved so that you do not have to waste your time shaving them. Um, I know that everybody's had the feeling of spending so much time setting things up that you just run out of ener any energy to do the thing that you wanted to do in the first place. And these templates and these themes help get around that problem. Um, templates, interestingly enough, are themselves documentation about how to do documentation. They're meta documentation. And another great thing about templates is that if enough people use them, they become a convention. They become something that people expect, which means that when your readers come to documentation that's made with a familiar template or a familiar theme, then they know what to expect in the docs without having to be told or do too much exploration. So you've also removed some cognitive load from them. So I think templates are a win for everybody. Less cognitive load for you, less cognitive load eventually for your readers. Now, there's one other thing that I wanted to mention that some of the pushback I get for developers around creating docs takes the form of, but I'm not a writer. 
And I totally understand it's very scary to work on things that you feel that you might not be very good at. Um, But unless you are the Beethoven of software development, you have been expressing yourself in writing at least as long or longer than you have been writing code. And I am here to tell you, your writing is fine. So as Dana mentioned, in my non-Google time, I run an extremely large, by number of words, online dictionary and API um, called WordNick. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. And uh, we have about, I don't know, 10 million words, kind of lost count. And we serve about 70 to 80 million API calls a week. And before founding WordNick, I used to run American dictionaries for Oxford University Press. And I also run the Semicolon Appreciation Society. So if you want someone to tell you not to worry about your writing, or if you're writing in English and it's not the language that you feel most comfortable in, I am here to say that in my professional language person opinion, you're going to be fine. Use templates, ask trusted friends to give things a quick proofread, accept corrections gracefully, and most people will overlook a few misspellings, a typo or two, or subjects that are having mild disagreements with their verbs. Don't wait for the perfect time or the perfect tool or the perfect word to get in the way of making docs or making docs better if you could do it today. So I think there'll be time for questions um, in the intermission when we're all in our 8-bit glory. But I did want to uh, share some links. So there's a link to Wizard Docs from Julia Evans. If you're interested in learning a lot more about technical writing, I would highly, highly, highly recommend the Write the Docs site. They also have an extremely active Slack. Um, The Good Docs project is on GitHub. Doxy.dev is where you can get the Doxy theme. I am Ina Keen on Twitter. Feel free to uh, ping me there if you have questions. I uh, tend to look at my DMs on, on an irregular basis, but I do look at them eventually. And uh, the background behind me is from the Muppet Labs. So thanks to the person at that blog post who um, laboriously uh, removed Beaker and Dr. Bunsen Honeydew so that I could use this background. Um, But anyway, thank you folks.